Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all new Pixel 7 Pro along with the Google Pixel Watch in the LTE variant. Google sent these along so we could take a look. So I'll unbox these, set them up, and then also take a first look, see what the software has and more. Now we'll start by opening up the Pixel 7 Pro, but the way Google sent this along was actually in this Pixel collection box. So this is really nice. We'll take a look, but that means this is already open. I didn't open this, it was sent to me this way. And this comes in at 899 and goes up to 1099. So you have three different options of storage, 128, 256, and 500. 12 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage. You also have three different colors, obsidian that we have here, hazel and snow. Now let's open up this box. And like I said, they already took the device out. So we'll open this up and see what we have in here. So we have a little bit of paperwork. It's moved around a little bit and let's see what we've got. So we just have a little warranty card and then also our SIM card tray removal tool. So that's really all you get in here, but at least it has a SIM card tray, which is always nice. We have a USB A to USB C adapter, and then we also have USB C to USB C. So that's what's in the box from this. Let's set this aside and take a look at the phone itself. So like I said, they have it in this really nice box for presentation. Let's go ahead and open this up. So we'll open it up. It's magnetic and it actually has a mirror in here. So you can see it says team pixel. It has a mirror. Let's take this little cloth off, which is really nice. It's a microfiber cloth and inside we have both devices. So we have the pixel seven pro along with the pixel watch. Let's see if we can remove this. And it looks like it's stuck to this piece here. They've glued it. So it looks like it just pulls right off of the front protector. So we'll put that back in place and let's set this aside for now. Now here's the pixel seven pro and obsidian. Like I said, I think it looks pretty good, but let's go around, see how everything's laid out, take a look at the design and then compare it with some other phones as well. So we have a visor still here that houses the cameras and it's metal this time instead of glass. You also have gorilla glass Victus on the back and the front. And then the frame itself is aluminum or aluminum, depending where you live. And you'll see on the right hand side, you can see how that little visor sticks out a bit. You've got sort of antenna lines, a power sleep wake button, a volume rocker. As we move down to the bottom, we have our speaker and microphone with USB-C in the middle. And then on the left hand side, you have a SIM card tray and then again, antenna lines. Let's go ahead and pop this out. And now we do have support for a single physical SIM and then also an eSIM. So it's just a single SIM, SIM card tray, no expandable storage. And so this is actually fairly light at 212 grams or 7.5 ounces. And this visor style goes back to the Nexus days. So it gives you an idea. They really haven't changed the size overall too much, but if we compare it with the latest pixel six pro in size, let me take the case off of this. I use this all of the time. Now we have the pixel six pro on the left, the pixel seven pro on the right. And overall, the dimensions are very similar. You can see the camera visor is really what separates both of these devices. Both are very fingerprint magnet sort of back glass setups, and you need really a skin or a case to prevent that. It's very easy to get fingerprints all over these. And then also the weight is very similar, but a little bit different. The seven pro, like I said, is 212 grams or 7.5 ounces where the six pro is 210 grams or 7.41 ounces. You really don't notice much of a difference here compared with the pixel six a, of course, it's a little bit larger with the seven pro. Now let's go ahead and set this up. We'll go ahead and turn it on. And this is a 6.7 inch display, 1440 by 3,120 at 512 pixels per inch. Again, it's covered with Gorilla Glass Victus. It has 120 Hertz fast motion, as well as a thousand nits in HDR and 1500 nits peak brightness. So if you need that outside, you should have that. As we wait for this to set up, this has Google's all new tensor core G2, and it also has 12 gigabytes of Ram. So it should be plenty fast. The G one was pretty fast in most situations. So again, it's still booting up and it does have 5g millimeter wave and sub six with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Now let's go ahead and set this up. So we'll hit get started. It says connect to a mobile network so we can download a SIM instead using an eSIM or we can use a physical SIM or both. Uh, we'll maybe move it over from the Pixel 6 Pro 
So we'll just take it out of here. So we'll go ahead and place the physical SIM in here give it just a moment to connect. Now, for some reason, it's not recognizing the SIM card. I'll set that up a little bit later. We'll connect to Wi-Fi, and now it says getting your phone ready. So we'll give it a moment to continue. Now it's asking me to copy apps and data. We'll hit next, and it says use your old device. So we can connect directly from the Pixel 6 Pro to the Pixel 7 Pro. So let me get that USB cable out of here. We'll go ahead and plug it in here. We'll plug it into the Pixel 6 Pro and hit next. We'll hit next. It says insert your cable. It connects automatically. It says copy data to your new device. We'll go ahead and tap on copy. We'll unlock with our fingerprint. And it says copying your account. So that's a pretty simple setup. We'll give it just a moment to finish. Now you can see on the 7 Pro, it says getting ready to copy choose what to copy on the next screen. Now we can choose what to copy. I want to move everything. It says it will take about three minutes to transfer. That's what's great about having USB-C. So we'll hit copy. It says copying your data. Looks like it's moving it over, which is great. Now we have to agree to using Google services. I like to use just about everything here. Now it's talking about the limited warranty. It comes with a one year warranty and also five years minimum of security updates. We'll go ahead and hit next. Agree to the additional legal terms. Then we have to set up a pin. Now it says set up fingerprint unlock. So we'll go ahead and hit more and we want to use that. We have to agree. We'll set it up. Now you can use the camera to unlock, but it's not as secure according to Google. So we'll go ahead and just set this up. It's under the display in the same location that it is on the Pixel 6 Pro. And we can add another finger as well. I'll do that quickly. Now it says fingerprint added. We'll tap on next. Now we can set up face unlock. It says if you normally wear glasses, you can wear them during setup. Looking at the phone can unlock it even when you don't intend to. Your phone can also be unlocked by someone who looks a lot like you, like an identical sibling. So you may or may not want to use this. We'll go ahead and hit more, hit agree, and it's going to walk us through face unlock. So let's go ahead and try that out. Hit start. And it says put your face in the center, move it lower move it around. There's some haptic feedback and that's all it took. That was very fast. Now it says continue setup. So we'll hit continue and give it just a moment. Now it says talk to Google hands free. Yes, I want to do that. So we'll hit agree. It says activate voice match. I do use that as well. We'll agree. And then it says, do you want to access your assistant without unlocking your device? I agree to that. This can all be customized later, of course. Now it says anything else. You can set up other things such as identify music around you. I do like to use that, so we'll leave it on for now. And then you can change all the other information. I'll just say done for now. It says get tips and tricks in your inbox. Sure, I'm in. And it says copying's done. That was pretty seamless. Everything's been moved over. We'll hit done says getting your phone ready. This may take a few minutes. Now it says swipe to navigate your phone. We'll go ahead and skip it. I know how to use that. And it says all set so we can swipe to go home. Now let's take a look at what wallpaper we have since we have some new ones. So we'll go into wallpaper, change wallpaper. And we've got some different ones here from curated culture, of course, to community lens and more. So we've got some nice new ones. Some of these look really great. I've used some of these on other devices as well. So we'll go ahead and go with this one for now. Home and lock screen sets the wallpaper, takes just a moment and it's set successfully. So now this is one of the included wallpapers. So if we go back in, you can see if we change wallpaper, we go back into the community lens. There's a bunch of them and I'll try and link them in the description if you'd like to try them out, but you can see there's quite a few of them here. So it has to sort of download some of them. This one's really nice, sort of astrophotography as well. A bunch of really nice ones, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and select home and lock screen, and it sets the wallpaper. Now let's see if we have any updates. So we'll go ahead and go into settings, and we'll go down to system. And it says system update and there is a security update. So we'll get this installed and then we'll continue. You'll see we're still installing the security update. It takes some time. This is the October update. If we go back, we'll go over to about, you can see that we have Android 13 with the September security update installed. So it's installing the October update. All of my apps have been updated as well and everything feels very fluid and fast. So just the little time I've used this, set this wallpaper and more.
Now internally we have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which they say is good for beyond 24 hours of use and up to 72 hours with extreme battery saver. It also charges to 50% in 30 minutes. So that's always nice. Of course, with the software, we get other features as well. So we have a built-in VPN, which is coming later. If you use Google Fi, it uses that anyway. And also the photos app has a new unblur feature. So if you're using the Google photos app, you'll be able to unblur photos specifically on this device and the pixel seven. Now, when it comes to the cameras, we get an upgrade again this year, and we have a 10.8 megapixel F 2.2 aperture camera on the front with a 92.8 degree field of view. There is no autofocus with this though. The rear cameras have a 50 megapixel main camera f 1.85. Then we also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide f 2.2 and a 48 megapixel telephoto f 3.5 with five times optical zoom and super res zoom up to 30 times. We also have a laser detect autofocus system. Now we'll take a look at these in a moment. Let's first go into the camera let it load here and all of the cameras can go up to 4k 60. And we also have 10 bit HDR video support this year. So you'll see here, if we go into video, let's rotate and it was a little bit glitchy there. It may need that update, but you'll see 4k ultra high resolution is the option frame rates 30 or 60. We also have 10 bit HDR, but the HDR is only available in 30 frames per second. I don't see a 20 bit or 24 frames per second option either. So you can see it gives an example there. If we go to 60 frames, it disables HDR. Of course we have speech enhancement and more. We also have slow motion and time lapse. Of course, if we go into the camera, we have our different options to zoom in here. It's fairly smooth, but a little bit slow there. So you'll see as we zoom in, go ultra wide and then back. We also have a cinematic blur mode this time. So it's showing what it looks like. It blurs out the background. We'll test that in just a moment, but give us a cinematic look to it. And of course their cameras have been known for really great photos. So let's try them out. So we'll go ahead and flip around to the forward facing camera. We'll go into video, make sure we have the right settings here, 4k. And one thing I really appreciate is the different microphones on here. So not only do we have the speaker, but we have a speaker at the top and bottom with three microphones. So let's go ahead and hit record. And now we're recording from the front facing camera of the pixel seven pro. So this gives you an idea of what it looks like and what it sounds like. Now let's see what cinematic video looks like also. And so that gives you an idea of that. Let's switch over to cinematic mode here. And again, it looks like you can only do that from the rear camera. So let me see if I can do this. We'll spin it around here. And this is the rear facing camera in cinematic mode. So again, this gives you an idea of what it actually looks like. Of course we can do macro. So let's take a look at that as well as a couple different photos just to see what zoom looks like quickly. And it gives you an idea of what this camera is capable of. Of course I can do a full test a little bit later on. Now it also has an IP 68 rating, so that's good. They don't tell us how far we can actually submerge it and for how long, but it does have that rating. And as you can see, the back of the phone is completely covered in fingerprints. Now it's quite warm as well as it's installing this update. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pixel watch. So again, let's go back to this collection box here. We'll take out the pixel watch itself. So let's go ahead and open the box, see what we've got in here since I haven't taken a look at this. So I guess this comes out like this and inside, of course, we've got your typical paperwork. Let's see what we've got. So we have a little just card that says G and then we have our warranty card, of course, and then just a couple different things of how to put the watch band on detach it and more. So you can see all of that here. So we'll go ahead and set that aside. And inside here, we have a couple things as well. So it looks like this just opens up. I'm not sure if we, this looks like it has some, a way to pull this out of here. There we go. It opens up and unrolls like that. And we've got a band in here. So we've got a band. We also have a charger. So let's pop that out. Take a look at the charger. So it's sort of wrapped in here pretty tightly. There we go can remove it like that and we'll set the rest aside. 
Now here's the band. We haven't really taken a very close look at these, but these attach a little bit different than what we've seen before. So we have this band with it and it looks like it just pops down into here. It clips onto this little piece here and it's probably stainless steel as the outside of this is all stainless steel. So this comes in at 349 or 399 with LTE and all of them have 32 gigabytes of storage. So of course we have heart rate sensors and more. And if we look around the outside edge, you can see here, if we press this down, we can slide this out. So you push this little button here and you can slide out the band, push it back in. Looks like we can just push it in and it slides to the side. So again, pop that out. It's a little bit tricky to do, but you push down and then slide it out. Again, you can see you just place it over like this and slide it into place. The same is true for both sides. So again, that's pretty easy to do and it looks seamless the way it fits into the watch. And this is the larger band. So this is a fairly small watch. So if I put this on my wrist like this, goes through the first piece here, put this on my wrist, clip it down like that. And it goes in just like that. So this is a little bit small for me and it is a little bit smaller watch 41 millimeters across. Let's go ahead and take this back off and see if we can set it up. Now it does come in three different colors. We have a champagne gold case with a hazel active band, a matte black case with an obsidian active band that goes along with the pixel. And then we also have a polished silver case with a chalk active band. Then you have other band options. Now, like I said, it's stainless steel and this is a floral astomer with soft touch coating and it's Corning Gorilla Glass, and let's go ahead and boot it up. It looks like we have a little microphone here, we've got our crown, and then also a button. Nothing really on the other side other than a speaker and maybe another microphone. See if we press the crown if it turns on, or we may have to push the other button. And it's a 320 pixel per inch display with DCI P3 color and a thousand nits of brightness. It does have a fairly small battery, 294 milliamp hours, which can get you through about 24 hours if you're lucky, probably. But we'll have to try that out. It does have an Exynos chip in it, 9110 system on a chip with a Cortex M33 coprocessor. So we'll wait for it to boot up. Let's see what the actual charger looks like. So it looks like it's magnetic. It's a little Google charger, clips onto the back here. So you'll see it's magnetic, very much like an Apple Watch that way. And then also, of course, we have some sensors on the bottom and I'll just give you a little close up here of what that says. It says Google around the outside edge, stainless steel case, and again, Google. So there it's booting up still. Now, as soon as it booted up, it had a little chime there, as you heard, and it says Google pixel watch. It requires an app is required to start setup. So we'll go ahead and go to the Google pixel store, install the app for this. It's pretty seamless. This looks very familiar, the setup. And it says connecting to Google Pixel Watch. So again, we'll give it just a moment. It's connecting. And now it wants to confirm the pin. We'll go ahead and hit confirm. And it says allow Google Pixel Watch to send you notifications. We'll hit allow, agree to the terms of service. And again, it says connecting to your watch. This could take a minute. Now it says, welcome to your Google pixel watch. So we'll go ahead and hit next. It says, put your watch on, slide the band through. It's telling me how to place it on my wrist and which wrist is it on? So I'm going to leave it on my left wrist with the crown on the right. And then it says, learn how to switch bands. We've already done that. And then attach your band. And then it says, get the Fitbit mobile app. We can install it or do it later. We'll just hit install for now. And then it says, talk to your watch. So you can use Google assistant. Of course, we'll give it just a second to set that up. And again, on the watch, it just says continue on phone. So it says connecting. This could take about a minute. Now it says your assistant is set up. You use this button for assistant and we'll hit next. And it says you're almost done. Continue. We can set a pin or a pattern. We'll skip that for now. It says get fast, secure access to your everyday essentials. So we'll go ahead and hit next. It says select apps for your watch. So you can have recommended apps installed on your device. We'll just hit continue for now and then stay connected on the go. So we can set up a carrier. We'll do this later. And it says updating your watch. So it says setup complete there. Now it's complete. 
and you can see here's the watch. So we need to log in. So we'll give it just a moment. It says watch restarting. Now the watch is rebooted. I put in my passcode and we can just swipe through. It feels very responsive, but there is an update for it as well. So if we go back home, press the button again, it brings up your different apps. You can scroll through. It does have pretty large bezels here though as well. And if we push the button at the top here, we can go into our exercise. And then if we press and hold it, we've got Google assistant. So it's pretty simple to operate. Of course we have different watch faces, but there is an update and I'll need to complete that. But let's go back here. You can see system update available. It gives the overall status of the battery watch faces and more. So you can connect your data to it and everything else. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Let's go into system and you can see the different versions where core services, Google pixel watch app. And so, like I said, I'll have to update this, take a look at the different watch faces available. If we press and hold, we can go over here. Let's go to, well, we have a bunch of different watch faces. So we have classic, we have everyday, we have concentric radial track, pilot bold, big time concentric. There's a bunch of different concentric ones. I was playing around with adding these and you can't really add them from the app and have them show up right away. But let's go to this one. And then you can see this is the watch face. It goes right to the outside edge. So those bezels are pretty big, but this feels very small on my wrist. So compared to other watches, it looks pretty small. Although a lot of people will appreciate that it's a very small. However, that will, obviously affect battery life. So I'll have to try it out for a few days. So my initial thoughts on the pixel seven pro overall, it feels very much like a pixel six pro with less sort of pronounced curves around the outside edge. So it does feel very similar. The screen unlock feels a little bit faster. It feels more accurate. Every time I use the fingerprint sensor, it feels like it's a little bit faster with the haptic response. Also, one thing I wanted to point out is that the case from the pixel six pro doesn't fit the seven pro. It does sort of snap into place, but you'll see here as we get close to the power sleep wake button that they're actually shifted down with the pixel seven pro. So it won't fit it won't work properly, but you can sort of fit it over the overall sort of camera visor fits in the same place. So it sort of fits, but not exactly how you'd want. So you definitely need a different case if you have a pixel seven pro and you're coming from a pixel six pro, everything feels very fast. I'm anxious to try out the Google tensor core Two, see how it responds and everything else. Now, if there's anything specifically you want to know about this or the pixel watch, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link all of these wallpapers in the description if I can find them and then put them out there for you in full resolution. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.